Hello and welcome to Moscow. Today it is a beautiful sunny spring day in Moscow and I'm going for a ride. It's uh, one of my favorite rides. It takes me down along the river into the city center. So right now I am just a few minutes out from the flat, almost down at the river. So let's go. Can you see that duck? It's a ruddy shell duck. Lovely reddish brown color. Let's see how close I can get. Suddenly, as of a few days ago, Moscow is, is full of these guys. They're migratory and I think they have just got here from India, where they spent the winter. See you later. Talking to the duck. And let's go down to the river. Here we are. The Moscow River. Hmm, I just realized that you can't see the river because the camera is too low down to the ground. Now this is when a head mount would come in handy so that I could put the camera on my helmet. The problem is, I've never really got over that uh, fear of looking ridiculous. Nobody wants to look ridiculous. I don't have to put a bloody camera on my head to make these videos. You know what I could do? Is just put it on the selfie stick and Hold it by hand. So I'm riding upstream towards the city center. I think the river is, well, if you had to single out anything, anything that, uh, if you had to single out one thing, you can't single out two things, can you? What I'm trying to say is the river is such a special and preeminent part of the city's character in a way I'd never expected before I came to Moscow. I'll continue this thought in a few minutes. Let's have a look at this. 
wonder if you can see that. Right. There. There's a boat there called Nadezhda, which means hope. And it's a fireboat. Basically an aquatic fire engine. They put out fires that happen on boats and alongside the river. And that's where it's stationed. I guess this is the aquatic fire station. There's another fire boat there. <clears throat> Obviously out of action. Vamos. So I was talking about the river. The river is very far from being straight. It's incredibly windy, so much so that it's disorientating. When you follow the river, your direction is changing all the time. But because it happens quite gradually, uh, it takes you by surprise sometimes. And that, that element of surprise, uh, it just adds, it adds that complexity to the city, which is um, which is good. It keeps you interested. It's, uh, it means that the layout of the city is interesting and complicated. Because before I came to Moscow, I had seen uh, views of the Kremlin with the river next to it and at that point it just looks like a straight river. Hello black-headed gull, welcome back. And of course I'd seen the other side of the Kremlin, Red Square and St. Basil's Cathedral with the stripy onion domes. And can it really be true that I had never really seen anything else in Moscow apart from, apart from those? Well, certainly nothing springs to mind right now. I suppose I had those images in my head on the one hand, and then on the other hand, uh, dull, depressing housing estates. Those were my images. But it's so much more interesting. I mean, of course it is. But it's. And I, I knew it would be more interesting, of course. It's a great city, it's a mega city. Oh, I guess another image I had was, in fact, I've thought of two. Before I came to Moscow, I had seen pictures of Moscow State University and the other Stalinist skyscrapers. And I'd also seen pictures of the famously beautiful metro system.
but I wasn't prepared for how interesting just the layout of the city is. I sniff a lot when I'm cycling. I hope that's not too distracting. Can you see the monastery at the other side of the river? It has one central shiny golden dome surrounded by four blue domes dotted with golden stars. big tower ahead has a, a bar and restaurant on the top I was there a few weeks ago amazing view of course the best view I guess in the city on the left there's a next to that big tower with the restaurant is the house of music that circular building with the domed roof. And I was there a few weeks ago to see a show. It's a good building, very pure. You know, many, um, many theatres are housed in uh, buildings that don't give you a clue about what's inside. Like the Bolshoi Theater, which incidentally just means big theater. It, uh, it just looks like any old neoclassical grand palace. It could be a museum. It could be a government building. It could be anything important. But uh, I was thinking about stopping there because it's a nice viewpoint. But onwards. But that house of music there. Doesn't hide what's inside it. Plus, there's a big treble clef on the top of it, which I think is a bit naff. Big golden treble clef. Oh yes, another corgi. Obviously, the ideal thing would be if there was a, cor a corgi Welsh Corgi, I think they're officially called, in every video I make. In my last bike ride video, there were two. So far today, one. Okay. Over at the other side of the river, is a very distinctive building and it's one of Stalin's skyscrapers. For a while it was the tallest building in Europe, certainly the tallest apartment building. Most of it was reserved for elite members of the party and the government. I guess it was built in the 50s. And it's impressive, of course it's impressive. That's what totalitarian architecture is all about.
strange mix of gothic. See all the pointy bits on the top of the towers are, are like the pointy bits. I'm sure there's a architectural term, but I'm going to use pointy bits. Uh, pointy bits on the top of the towers are like those on uh, the great cathedrals of Western Europe. And then further down, there are carved arches, which are more like uh, Roman temples. Gothic arches being uh, pointy. Gothic architects liked uh, pointy stuff. found a nice spot down by the river, it even has a little beach. Whoa! That's the wake from the boat that just went past. So across there is the Stalinist apartment building, standing by the confluence of the river Yauza, I think it's called, over there. That's where it joins the Moscow River. And that's a much loved building, that one over there. I prefer this one here, the other side of the river. That was built 20 years before that one, but it's much more modern. That's our university building has been since it was built in 1930 in the constructivist modernist style and I like it big windows nice curves something uh, humble and humane about it is that bullshit? I don't think so. That one over there, that's not humble and humane. That's bombastic. I'm going to continue into the city centre now. Seems like only yesterday I was on a boat going down the river, breaking through the ice. It was only a few weeks ago. Right, I'm going to cross over here. Well, maybe not here. Now then. See this nondescript little building straight ahead, right at the water's edge. That is the pumping station for this power station. This is the oldest working power station in Moscow, in Russia in fact, built in 1897. I did some research. Let me, let me think, see if I can remember. I'll wait till I get somewhere quieter. I'm going to go around the back of the power station. 
that power station supplies electricity and heat to the whole of the central administrative district in Moscow. 4,000 buildings, including 80 schools, lots of hospitals, and thousands of apartment buildings. The power station itself has been running continuously, I think since 1897, but it's constantly being updated with new equipment, <coughs> more efficient, more environmentally friendly equipment. I love these old painted, these old buildings painted in pastel colors, very distinctive of Moscow and Russia in general. Here we are, let's see. Right, I'll cross over here. Okay. <clears throat> Some of the chimneys of the power station there. And I don't know if you can see behind the gate, the head of Lenin. Underneath, there's some writing which I think says, because I looked it up something like to the glory of communist labor. Often mainly interested in modernist buildings, power stations, and things that aren't really on the tourist trail. But I'm not so contrarian that I would just pass by the Kremlin and St. Basil's Cathedral without taking a closer look. So uh, I'm going to cross over, go up on the bridge. So, going up onto this bridge, where there is a very fine view of the Kremlin. Wonderful St. Basil's Cathedral, straight ahead. And part of the Kremlin to the left.
This is Zariyadji Park. Quite a new, a new park, this one. Just a few years old. It's great. It's great, but it could have been greater. This might be ignorant, but I'm going to say it anyway. See this thing ahead? It's a cantilevered platform that extends out into the river. And it's a great viewing platform. <coughs> Hello, duck. And I'm, but I'm just thinking, well, wouldn't it have been so much more ambitious and fantastic if it was a bridge? Totally impractical, no doubt. Right. Time to return. Turn to that bridge and cross the river again. I never expected to come to Moscow. Never wanted to come to Moscow. Before I met my wife. And even after meeting my wife, even after we got married, I said, there's no way I'm moving to Moscow. I hadn't actually been to Moscow before we got married. She hadn't taken me home. So what I'm saying is until very recently I had absolutely no desire to, uh, to stay in Moscow and I didn't really have much of an interest in seeing it because I was ignorant. Is this a way through? Uh, no. I didn't know what a great city it is. If I can just crack the language, then I think this will really become my home. Kremlin is on the right. Look at these flowers here. Those flowers commemorate 
a guy called Nemtsov, who was assassinated there some years ago. A view of the Kremlin from across the river. You can see the red Kremlin walls with several towers. Then four of the churches are cathedrals in Cathedral Square inside the Kremlin. Along to the left is the Grand Kremlin Palace. It's the official residence of the president, but Putin doesn't actually live there. And then it extends down into the distance there. It's a lot bigger, a lot more like a park inside than I'd expected. of the sun. Ah. Oh, this is fine. This here is a branch of the Moscow River. It's a canal, I suppose. And right now I'm on an island. So from the Kremlin, I crossed the river, came across the island in the, in the middle of the river, and then crossed the canal on the other side of that. And now, I'm going to cross them all again in the other direction. Over there is the second oldest power station in Moscow. But that's been decommissioned now, and they are turning it into a cultural venue. Looks like it's nearly finished. Maybe it's going to be ready. Maybe it's going to be ready for this summer. 
they've done a really nice job of restoring the building. And they've built this nice uh, platform alongside the canal. It looks like it's, I don't know, for people to sit there and watch performances, but then where would the performances be? In the canal? I imagine processions of colorful boats. Well, this is all very, very nice. I like it. This bridge is really cool because it not only takes you across the canal and the river, but across the whole island in between. That's the Cathedral of Christ the Saviour. Completely rebuilt based on the original plans quite recently because the communists demolished it. So what you see is an exact reproduction. And we're crossing the river now, again. Is it disrespectful to cycle through the grounds of a church? Perhaps. In any case, I think it's not allowed. But uh, we're in Russia, where it's frowned upon to follow the rules. A wee bit of biting satire there. Back down to the river. I've just spotted this strange and wonderful building. Either lovingly restored or new. Must be a restoration. A pre-modern experimental building. If I had to take a guess, I would guess 1900. No, older surely. I don't know. No idea. I don't really know how to read the, the signs in Russian architecture. Here we are 
it again. Over on the other side, where the canal branches off from the main river. There is a ridiculous statue that pretty much everyone in Moscow hates. It's Peter the Great. who created the Russian Navy. And that's what that's all about. You know, the more I see it, the more I kind of think it's so weird, so crazy and so ugly that I almost admire it. My plan now is to cross the river once again into the park. Gorky Park. For most of my life, the name Gorky Park had a certain meaning for me. When I was growing up, my dad had the book Gorky Park by Martin Cruz Smith in the house. So it was just hanging around the house for uh, all of my childhood, and that's what it meant. But since I moved to Moscow, that meaning has almost been eclipsed completely. There's only one way to reconcile these Competing meanings, and that's to read the book. I'm going to cross over and enter the park. again up there on the Soviet crest, hammer and sickle, 1955. I actually came through the park yesterday and it was so busy there were traffic jams on the cycle paths. It's 
So what do I mean when I say reading the book Gorky Park would reconcile the two meanings that the name Gorky Park has for me? Is that just bullshit? I think what I mean is if I read it and the park itself is as I expect, kind of significant in the book. It will seem to tie things together. Gorky Park now is somewhere I come to very often, especially in the summer. It's not that far from where I live. And so, the fact that that book was lying around for, well, right through my childhood. It will be almost like all of that time it contained something that would become meaningful, meaningful for me later on in my life. I don't mean that from a, you know, supernatural point of view, or, and I'm not talking about destiny or fate, but something like that. We have ways of making meaning. Someone described human beings as meaning-making creatures. Was that, uh, what's his name, that American guy? I can't remember. So, we all have ways of uh, just telling stories about our lives. And just the fact that this book was lying around for so many years, when there was never any clue that Gorky Park would ever mean anything else to me or that I would spend a lot of my time here. The fact that it was lying around back then, I mean, on the one hand, it's meaningless. It's barely even an interesting coincidence. But on the other hand, I can choose to, uh, to feel that it's significant. Just a way of telling a story. We've been passing by a few things that I haven't mentioned. Should I? All right, I'm going to turn around. Here we go. Over on the other side of the river is <laughs> I just forgotten what it is. It's the Ministry of Defence. After the war, Yulia, my wife's grandfather, worked there until his retirement. What a beautiful day. Hi. Still in Gorky Park. all over the city. It's quite obvious there's a, an intense concerted effort to clean everything up after the, the snow is gone.
they really take the cleaning, the street cleaning, they really take it seriously. I think it's the cleanest city I've ever seen. Now, bear in mind, I haven't been to Singapore or Dubai.